Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. Today on the show, we are going to be solo, just you and me today. Um, I'm going to be porting over the learnwithjason.dev blog to Astro. Um, and so, as many of you know, the site is built on uh, on Remix right now. Um, I really like Remix for managing the episodes. It's very good because I have to do a handful of like cascading fetches um, because the like the show has an API that brings in all the episodes, but I can't pull complete information for the episodes because things like transcripts make the the output just absolutely unreasonably large. So for each episode, I need to pull the episode data and then get the transcripts and then I'm pulling in some related episodes and stuff and, and being able to do that in, in uh, Astro is really nice. However, Astro is absolutely not built for blogs. Um, I write in Markdown and I, or actually I write in MDX because I have a couple like aside components and a, a figure component that does some automatic stuff with like Cloudinary and things. That has just been a, a really, really challenging. Um, and, and I think it's because I'm holding the, the, I'm holding the tool wrong. Right. And so I want to use the right tool for the job instead of trying to force tools to my will. And because I'm on Netlify, I can actually, um, proxy the blog in under learn with Jason as like a completely separate site. So I'm going to be able to, um, to kind of make this all run and, and do what I want without having to do a ton for, um, like I, it's, it it doesn't make it that much more complicated. I actually think it'll make it a little bit simpler. Um, and so that's, uh, that's sort of my, my intention here. Um, JJ Sacrilicious. Hello. Hello. Also in Portland, Portland, Oregon. Um, I mean, what other Portland is there? I guess you can go to Portland, Maine. I've heard has some cool things going on, but I've never been there myself. Um, see Lynn in the chat, Brian in the chat. What's up y'all? Tony, how you doing? Um, Tony, did I say, did I not say that Remix isn't built for blogs? Yes. Remix is not built for blogs. Astro is built for blogs, right? Um, oh yeah. <laughs> uh, hello. Hello to Wasim in India. Um, American 2050. Yes, I am live. Uh, I, I don't know if y'all saw this, but I, after my stream on Tuesday, I needed to record a demo. Um, one of the things that I promised Netlify I would do before I wrapped up there and then just did not get done was a, uh, a video demo, like a walkthrough of the, like, what's the dev flow? Why is it cool? And I just, you know, I, I use OBS to record my, my desktop and I have it set up where I have my, um, my desktop here and my video here and I record both and then I cut them up for editing and stuff. And I just hit the go live button also. So I, um, recorded 25 minutes of me talking to the camera and uh yeah that's that's what it looks like when i don't know that i'm being watched so um talked a little more crap to my computer but otherwise basically the same <laughs> uh yeah bobby tables that's me um thank you for the sub uh three months of subs very much appreciated very very cool um all right so well, thanks, Mark Bruno. I, I have fun. I have fun creating them, and I'm really glad that uh, that people are getting any value out of that. So that that uh, that makes me feel nice. Good warm fuzzies for the day. Yeah, I mean, I like I like Astro. I I think Astro is such a cool platform. I love the the overall approach. It feels really familiar to me. Um, and like you know the. I feel like there's sort of a, a spectrum of complexity when it comes to building for the web. And there's a spectrum of complexity when it comes to what I want to put on the web, right? And so what I like about Astro is it fits really well into my particular niche of like, I want a blog and I want to over-engineer my blog, but I don't necessarily want my blog to be so over-engineered that I can't figure out why the dev server won't start or like I'm having to set up like file tracing so that I can make sure the right bucket of files is included in the in the bundled output so that it can you know read the MDX on the fly and like that's sort of what I ran into with with Remix was that Remix wants you to read the MDX at at server time so you're you're basically now getting into all the things that I don't like about running servers, which is you have 
your site, which needs to go and grab a file and then parse that file and then put it on the, on the internet. And like, that's fine, but it just, it feels rickety to me. And I, I kept fighting these problems where I want to move my blog into a mono repo. Actually, the whole thing that spurred this was I want learn with Jason to be in a mono repo. I'm, I'm setting it up on NX. And I did that because I've got scenes, I've got webhook, uh, webhooks, I've got APIs, I've got sound effects, I've got the blog itself, I've got the the rest of the website, I've got an e-commerce store. Um, you know, there's there's a lot going on in Learn with Jason, and I'd been cramming it all mostly into one repo, except for the stuff that wasn't in that one repo. And I was like copy pasting style stuff around and that was a pain. It was getting out of sync. And so what I want is I want some shared components. So around like my color tokens and some of the, the truly shared components, like my logo and, um, you know, icon sets and, and stuff like that. Uh, so that I have each of the sites pulling from the same shared components. And then also I can develop all of that locally. And like, if I update the shared components, I don't have to then go publish to NPM and then go update all of the dependencies. I just update the shared components and because it's a mono repo and because NX is smart about this, it will actually take my site and say, okay, the ones that need to build will rebuild and the ones that don't, they just pull from the cache and, and, uh, and the build ends, you know, within a few milliseconds. So that to me is kind of the magic of, of why you would want to set up a mono repo. And when I went to put my remix site into the mono repo, everything worked great except the blog. The blog completely exploded on me. And, you know, it just, it, it's just not, I don't know. It, I'm sure that I'm holding it wrong, but at, at the end of the day, I spent enough time on it that I decided it would be better to just put it on Astro. Um, and it's a good excuse to, to really like steer into my, um, it, it, yeah, it's it just it lets me steer into my my exploration. I you know I haven't really built anything serious with Astro. I've I've only had a chance to play with it for a few things, and uh, you know I'm excited to to give it a shot and do some stuff. So, um, yeah, Kelvin's on Astro. Who else is using Astro in production now? Astro is a router for Svelte. That's kind of a cool idea. Procrastinator, Mastermind, just heard of Astro. Yup, yup, yup. Functions in front matter, yup. Yeah, so Bobby Tables is, is calling it out right here. I I don't really want my blog to require a server. Um, and it, it just ends up feeling, I don't know. I mean, like, I, I don't want us to lose sight of the fact that there's a reason that things like when, when static sites got branded as the jam stack it was it was this idea that you should be doing as little as possible so uh, you know instead of calling it the jam stack maybe call it the rule of least power why why would i need more than just my blog to be a static file that's that served to everybody and i want that capability in any framework that i use um and so that's one of the things that has kind of been a it's been a bit of a bummer for me with like Next.js where they're they're getting rid of the export functionality and and you know we're we're seeing like Remix doesn't really want an export functionality and like I get it it's different tools for different things but I think this really starts to make it important then to be choosing the right tool I think when when Next had an export it could potentially be the the use it for everything because you would just export the pieces that you don't need and then you would. Uh, that you didn't need any dyna dynamism on and then you would like use standard next for for like the dashboards and stuff but everybody's kind of going all in on like well use servers use servers and I I don't know I just I remember using servers and, and it wasn't fun there were a ton of things that, that got really complicated really fast and so I, I kind of want that to be the thing that I do when I have a good reason not as like my default um but uh, yeah, so that's 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 my reasoning here, and that's uh, yeah. All right, yeah. No, so Chris is here using Astro. Uh, Brian's got some things in there. All right, Sarah's here to watch. Richard DeGill doing the Nux two site in Astro. Nice, nice. Pipog two content sites. Musha is, uh, oh, why should I use Astro instead of Gatsby? This is a great question. Okay. So we're going to, so I'm going to start by saying 
one of the reasons is that Gatsby has a, a bit of a checkered past. If you if you look at their their interactions with the community, they don't have the greatest track record. And so that's one reason, right? But let's let's leave that aside and talk just on tech. So the the biggest reason for me is that what Gatsby excels at is the the stitching together of lots of different content sources. The reason that I would reach for Gatsby, um, if I if I were to reach for Gatsby, is that they allow me to use this really robust set of plugins to source content from all of the third party systems that my team needs me to use. So I can pull in from Contentful, from Sanity, from Shopify, from whatever, and I put all that together into one data layer that I can then query on any page. And it makes the experience of building these complex multi backend sites very like predictable and standardized. And that is wonderful, but I'm not doing that. I'm using Markdown. And so for me, writing a blog in Markdown with, uh, we'll, we'll say MDX, cause I'm using a little bit of components in there, uh, writing a, a blog in MDX, I have files. And I have a tiny bit of, of external stuff. Like I'm using Cloudinary for images, but I'm not pulling in content from anywhere else. I'm, you know, I'm not, uh, I don't have third party systems involved. And so loading my MDX into Gatsby's data layer to then read it back out feels overwrought to me. And it, it feels like I'm, I'm adding complexity for something that doesn't provide any benefit for my use case. So what Astro is is so good at is that I'm I want to write some markdown and I want to see that markdown on the screen. And Astro is really good at that. There's no extra layer of thing to learn. You just you write the markdown and there it is. And if you export some const, you can use that. You know what I mean? Like it's it's pretty it's pretty straightforward. And I and I think that's the um again going back to the rule of least power, like What's the what's the minimum number of things I need to understand, the minimum number of moving parts to work with a tool? And like if I was gonna start getting into Astro with a whole bunch of different backends, I would find myself starting to write utility files and a bunch of helpers and things like that. And you're actually gonna see this in the mono repo that I've started to write like helpers for sanity, because I use sanity for the episodes of Learn with Jason and helpers for Notion, uh, because I have a Discord bot, for example, that lets me put guest ideas into into Notion from a slash command. Um, and so each of those things has its own little helper utility. And if I was doing all of that for just my blog, I would start thinking more more seriously about like, okay, maybe I need a data layer, like a, a content layer like Gatsby provides. So that's my that's my reasoning and why I would um, why I would make that choice. Uh, is server side rendering good for SEO, which is helpful for blogs? I mean, yes. It, like the less work we make Google's bots do to find our content, the more likely that content is going to show up high in the in the rankings. I mean, the but let me be clear, the most important thing about SEO is writing something somebody wants to read, right? Like there's no amount of technical hacks that's going to suddenly make content that people aren't interested in show up at the top of rankings. Like you you have to think about what somebody going to Google when they want to, um, when they're trying to find a thing, right? So, you know, if it, like... I write posts that are not SEO friendly. Like I'm, I'm writing these like philosophy posts, why you should think about X like Y and, and nobody's Googling, like, how should I change the way I think about the world? That's very much not my intent. But when I do want something to get picked up, I'm thinking like, oh, somebody's going to get this error in this framework and I'm going to write the post that helps them overcome that error. Because as soon as you get an error, what do you do? You copy paste it into Google and you search and then you, you go to whichever blog looks like it's most likely to show you a solution to your problem, right? That's like, that's SEO. And it doesn't matter what technology I've built that blog with. Most likely, if I am the thing that people want to read when they Google their error, that's going to show up first. Um, so yeah, like, yes, server-side rendering is helpful. No, it is not more important than writing good content, if that makes sense. I <laughs> never forget the lamp stack. Yes. Um, just scanning, scanning, scanning. Uh, if I move away from Gatsby, does that mean I have to throw out my awesome swag? No, no, no. I don't, I don't want anybody to feel like they, they have to stop using Gatsby. Like, you know, it's like, it's a tech company. Every tech company has got skeletons in its closet. So, you know, don't, don't boil the ocean. Cause the next one you go to is going to have problems too. Um, 
I mean, you know, like <laughs> start digging, you're going to find bodies. Um, let's see. Uh, I want to move one of my WordPress sites to Astro. Yes. Comment systems are a pain. Um, yeah. Uh, have I done the state of JS survey? I haven't. I'm honestly, I'm a little bummed in the, the state of JS because they, you know, they, for years now, they've gotten feedback that they need to work on, on representation and they've just kind of not like, I, I think Sasha is listening this year. He, he DM me and was interested in, in kind of forming like a, a content review committee to, to hopefully improve things. But it, I don't know this, this year I was a little bummed to see that, you know, they yet again made a list of like content creators and like half the content creators are not even making content anymore. Um, and they're all white dudes. So it's just kind of a, it's just kind of a bummer to see that. Uh, but yeah, okay. Let's, let's keep on scrolling down here. Um, Nartsi, oh, glad you were able to make one live. Um, can you expect more burger content? I hope so. I, um, I actually, I'm going to do a little bit of a, I'll do a little like photojournalism today because I have an absolutely ridiculous new box of, of toys coming. Um, as part of the, the doubling down on Learn with Jason, I'm replacing a bunch of gear. So I, uh, I'm trying to get like, I have like, like I'm going to show you one piece and then I'm going to stop. Okay, so this, which, am I out of focus now? I am. Hello, be in focus, there we go. So this, uh, you can kind of see, is the, the Sennheiser box, and inside of it is, I just forgot the model number, the MK416, I believe. Um, and so I am going to do my dangdest to uh, replace this mic with a, with a shotgun mic so that I can be uh, not having a microphone in my face. Um, I'm also working on setting up multi-camera. Uh, so I have the I have an old Sony A5100 that I was my first DSLR, and I want to use that for like camera two, right? So, anyways, I got a bunch of ideas. I got a a, a road. Uh, a Rodecaster Pro 2 coming. I've got a uh, an A10 Mini Pro ISO so that I can record sources in and get better. Like because right now, whenever I do a recording, it's like the you can see that I'm kind of I'm in this box here, right? And the the frames of this box, I I can't get to the raw video file that's underneath. I actually have to like just tr crop in, and so it leads to quality issues and all that kind of stuff. So. Um, Working on working on improving all that. I see. Uh, I see. Chris is in the Lemon Podcasting is in there. Um, this is all to make your life uh, easier and harder at the same time. Um. <laughs> okay. So. Uh, yeah. 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 Brian. Exactly. Like I want to be able to do asides and and you know if I'm cutting up a longer video and and I want to make it shorter I want to be able to have like alternative angles so that I'm not having to do the like zoom smash cut all the time. Um, uh, Eddie, yes, that is correct. I am full-time on Learn with Jason as of this month. So I, I ended my full-time employment with Netlify on great terms. Love the company. Um, you know, I'm still going to be contracting with them in the future. I just had it, like the stars aligned. I can do this as my whole job. And I just couldn't say no to, to the chance to do that. Like this, like how, how, how is it that I get to hang out with y'all? And that's like my living now. Um, it's, it's incredible. I'm super excited about it. And, uh, you know, Thanks. Thanks for making this possible, y'all. Actually, speaking of which, why don't we switch over to code mode? Because that is a great segue for me to uh, give a quick plug. If I can pull the browser over here. Let me just pull this on over. Make it the right size. And uh, is this the right size? Yes, it is. Okay. So I'm going to head over to the homepage here. And I'm going to do a shout out. Because we have... Uh, we have white coat captioning. Laura's with us today doing all of the live captions. Thank you so much, Laura. And that's made possible through the support of our sponsors, Netlify, NX, and New Relic, all kicking in to make the show more accessible to more people, which means a whole lot to me. Thank you. Thank you very much. And, and this sponsorship, your subscriptions on Twitch, the, the purchases in the swag store, like all the things that, that y'all are doing is, is the reason that I'm able to do this full time. So I very, very, very much appreciate all that. Okay, 
Um, so let's take a look. This is the the blog running on on Remix, right? So this is this is what we're starting our starting point is. And what I want to do is I want to get all of this running on Astro. And so this is uh, so this is the announcement post of me going full time. And uh, let's see here. We've got. Hey, Brian, thank you for the gift sub. Um, <laughs> yeah, the next year of Learn with Jason is going to be great. Okay, so there are there are a few features here that I'm using Remix to build. So the first one is I have these files are MDX files, and I am having to read the MDX directly from the file system in order to build out this um, this list. And then in here... I am, uh, I'm also like pulling in the individual file and then I have to set up some react use effect stuff so that I can do this piece here, which is, I want the, the headings to announce. Um, and that is, uh, that is the whole, that's the whole thing, right? So I want to get this running. I've, I've had a little bit of a head start here, so I will show you I'm in the, the mono repo branch. So I'm going to open this up. And uh, let's take a look at where we are. So first and foremost, um, this is an NX site. If if you've never seen NX before, um, they are you know full disclosure one of my sponsors. But um, they they give you a handful of cool things where they they let you kind of like set if you run a build, then anything that depends on that build is going to be um, built first. And I can run it in the cloud, which gives me uh, cacheable operations. And so this this access token is published. You, you can commit it and all that stuff. So I'm not leaking secrets or anything. Um, and then what that lets me do is in my package JSON here, I can set workspaces. And in my workspaces, NX is now able to determine that anything under these folders with a package JSON is an independent site. So when I pop these open, these are my packages. So I've got a design system, uh, helpers for Notion and Sanity, and then Socket Studio is a, a company that I was going to start a long time ago around all the, the real-time interactivity on the blog. So the, the chat overlay and the boop drop and the sound effects and all those things are all, um, those are all done through Socket Studio. Uh, so I have some helpers to make that work. And then I have sites. I've got my API, the blog, which is what we're going to work on today. I've got a Discord bot. I've got um, the scenes, which are what you're looking at, the overlays, the lower third and, and all that bit. Um, my webhook. So like when somebody signs up for an episode, I use Calendly for that. And they, uh, they will send a webhook to me, which I can use to then put the guest information into Notion so that... Aiden on the team is aware that that a new guest has been added and just kind of helps me automate some things and, and keep my life easier. Um, and then this is the the original remix site. So let's start by poking around in the remix site. And if we look in here, we've got our routes and there's there's a few things to note about like here with the episodes like this is so nice. I've got my episodes and I'm able to pull in you know, here's the data. I've got my loader so that I can load my episodes from my API. And then I'm able to kind of grab out the, the host and teacher. And this, this little helper just makes sure that things are polyfilled because some of my older guests don't have all the details as the new one do. Um, and then I load in the episodes and I can feed them into a, a list component, right? This is exactly what I want. This is, this is such a pleasant workflow. Um, it, it brings all of this right into the, into the framework and feels really good. So, uh, I, I want to make sure that I'm being clear. Like I love remix. I think it's, it's excellent. This is not me saying I don't want to use it anymore. It's just, you know, I've, I've hit a limitation of it. The episodes are great. You, uh, you pull in the parameters, you get the episode from the slug, which is just in this case, the whole thing. Um, and then I make a query to my API around what it is. Uh, so I'm getting, you know, the, the name of the episode and then we, uh, Oh, if it ends with JSON, then it redirects to the, the API. So that's a whole cool thing that I did. So if you, if you check this, I forgot that I did this actually. So check this out. We go into this latest episode and I add dot JSON to the end and there you go. There's your, your JSON representation of the episode. Um, and you can also do, this is another cool one that I did. If you just like add things like that to the end of it, it, um, it gives you like different features, right? And that's all because I have, 
uh, a combination of like remix so with the the json detection and stuff um and then i also have the the api which currently is tucked in here and this is kind of a mess so i've had to prefix things with api to find them these are all my sound effects i've got a bunch of shopify stuff in here like it's just kind of hard to track what's going on um, I, I had this misguided idea that if I made all of my sound effects into serverless functions that more people would make them. And that just hasn't been the case. So I actually, future plan is to make it um, a web interface that if you log in with your Twitch account, you'll be able to submit new sound effects for the show and, and then we'll have an approval process and all that. I'll probably build that on stream because it sounds fun. Um, but uh, so anyways, there's a lot going on in here and it's kind of hard for me to keep track of. Uh, and so I want that to be easier to track. And that's why I'm splitting the API out into its own, uh, its own separate site and the web hooks out into their own separate site. And, and eventually the store will probably be its own separate site so that I have, you know, just independent control over the things that I need. Um, and then I've got, I can rely on these, the design system and, and the different helpers to make sure that I'm not duplicating code. So it's still dry. And because I'm using NX, I don't have to publish these packages to use them. I can just import them. So let's take a let's take a look into why I think MDX on, on Remix is not the right call, and that is uh, first I want to um, pull in like post styles, so I have to add this like secret file here that is just to pull in the links globally, and like that's fine, okay, that's fine, and then I have this kind of secret folder for MDX, and then inside of that I have the like the blog itself here, and this one is is kind of this one's hard for me. I, I struggle with it. So we got to get like, or is this even the right thing? Hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is right. I think. No, it's not. See, this is how, this is why it's so, it, this is really hard for me. So this is the, the blog template, like a layout, but it's not the blog homepage. The blog homepage is in here as index.js. And so anyway, I just can't, I just can't like, it's very clear that what I'm trying to do is against the, the grain of Remix. And so I, I have three files to manage just the index of my blog. And then any one of these, I am having to bring in this like wrapper. Um, and then these are my actual components and, and like all of this is fine. I, it really is like, I, I, I don't want to say that this isn't manageable, but then the, the follow-up problem becomes this is all done like server, like serverlessly. And that means that this needs to be included in the serverless output. And that means that in here, I'm having to do stuff like this, which is like low level config of, of how Netlify is including files so that this whole MDX folder ends up in the, the serverless function so that Remix can interpret it <clears throat> and, and read things. What are y'all a hemming on me? Can y'all hear me? What the hell's going on? Why is my video down? Hold on a second. Let me let me figure out what's going on with the. Oh, is it doing this? There's this thing that my camera does that's really annoying. I've I've broken it in. Um... Let's see. We're gonna reset the transform. There I am. And then I'm going to shrink this. I wonder why it's doing that. It's very annoying. So let's, uh, let's see, how big should I be today? Should I be this big? Should I be bigger? How about this? That seems okay. And then I can, uh, what do I do? Alt? Yeah, Alt click to make that smaller. And that's me. I don't know why it's doing that. Um, yeah, so the, the problem is, is that somehow this video uh, embed and the one on my pair programming are linked and when I edit this one, it also changes the one for guests and causes absolute chaos. And I, I, I don't know. I'm rebuilding my scene, so I'm not worrying about it. So uh, soon, soon, I'll have uh, 1080p scenes. Um, okay, so little little side. Uh... <laughs> yes, the old gear heard that I was I was thinking about changing things up. I know, I know. What's in my mug today? Anybody know? keeping in mind that it's 10 a.m. Um, okay. <laughs> All right. 
So, uh, oh, thank you for the sub. Now to see when do I start full time on, on LWJ? I already have, uh, the 23rd of November was my last day at, at Netlify. I'm technically, okay. So actually that's maybe, maybe a misrepresentation. January is when I'm really going hard. I, I wanted to take December to be very like coasty. Um, I haven't taken a real break since like 2016. So, uh, having, having a month where my entire schedule is two episodes a week with very little else going on is, is kind of intentional so that I can, I mean, it's also the holidays, like, you know, I got family stuff coming up and, and so, um, trying to, trying to lay low for a little bit. And then in January, we're going to go hit it hard. Um, Wasim, what do you think of the micro front end pattern? I mean, as I am, as I am currently building it, I'm going to have to say I'm a fan, but I, I do think that it is something that is, uh, it is a tool that should be used very intentionally. Like, I don't think it should be the first thing that somebody reaches for, because as you'll see, as I start building this out, like I'm not building something simple here. Um, I am, I am solving a very complicated problem that I personally have in the business of learn with Jason, which is that I have a bunch of things that share styling and I have specific needs for different aspects of my business that aren't really compatible with one single stack. And, uh, if I do want people to help, I like, I have worked around these problems through severe over-engineering, but anytime anybody wants to help on this site, their dev environment almost inevitably breaks. And it's just a big bummer, right? So I want something that's easier for people to build. And, and um, that's that's what we're working toward here is uh, is making it simpler for somebody to contribute and, and work in this. But I'm doing that by making the setup of the sites themselves actually more complex. So so it's definitely not a tool to just kind of fly into and and uh, and, you know, start setting up micro front ends for everything right now. Um, all right. All right. All right. So. So we talked about remix. We talked about all of the the like why my reasoning for for going out here because we've got like file one, file two, file three to manage the the meta styles and stuff like that. And then we've got in the the MDX itself, we've got this need to um, you know and and like this part. This is this is what I want. I want to write all of my blog posts just like this. Um, and the the catch just comes in that remix isn't like pre building these it's it's not building the blog posts at at uh, build time it is building them at request time and it just leads for me to enough hoops that i have to jump through with making sure like i showed here the the files are present that it's just it's just too it's too much for what i'm doing like i want i want writing a blog to be i wrote a blog i've I've published it to Git and it just works. And I don't feel like that is currently how it works. I have to like rebuild my mental model of how the, the learn with Jason blog works every time I write for it. So let's look at Astro. Now I've got a, a head start here. So I'm going to, um, let me, let me start what I've done and check this out. So you go NX run blog dev. And now it's going to start my blog for me. Okay, so, oh dang it, open in the wrong tab. Pull you over here. Okay, yeah, but I want you to go. <sighs> Come on. There we go. I want that part over there, and I want this part over here. Get out of my get out of my game. Okay. Um, where did it go? Welcome to Astro. There it is. Okay. So here's my, here's my site that I'm, I'm porting. And if I go over to the blog, um, there's a, there's a little bit going on here. Um, and right. So here we go. This is, this is the blog. Here's the, the blog now. So I'm missing pieces. Um, but I was able to kind of copy this general format over. And, um, I moved one post over so that I could, I could kind of try it out. And then if I go into this theme switcher, go into this theme switcher, uh, you can see that it's, it's like close, but not right. Like I'm missing some of these styles and the headings aren't doing what they used to do. And 
got some some style issues where like why are these links not the right color um so definitely work to be done here um but you know we're we're making we're making some progress uh it looks like syntax highlighting is is there but not quite right my images are doing what they want or what i want uh, my code highlights are not there um so you know it's it's a it's a work in progress to to be absolutely accurate here so um what i want to do then is i want to how do i bust this out of the split get out yeah okay so then i can go here here's the astro version and what i did manage to get working is this and i actually want to show you how much nicer this is when you're not writing it in react so let's go to the the www and let's look at my specialty stuff so here is the blog is this where it happens it's not where it happens. It happens in. It happens in the wrapper post. That's right. So here's my wrapper post, and in here, um, I have my my wrapper post. We'll look at this use effect in a second. And so what I'm doing is I'm getting my headings, and then I set my headings in an ordered list, and each of them links to the the headings ID. Um, so. What that lets me do is build out this list here. And then what I want to happen is whenever one of these headings scrolls into view in the post content, I want it to highlight like this. So update the HTML, great. So I come up and when we get back to the, the step two, it'll highlight step two here, right? So that's that's the, the flow that I want. And then if you click on one, it'll kind of bounce you to the one that you want to be at. And it looks like I have some bugs, but um, it's it's doing what I want it to do. So the way this works in React is I am setting a, um, I have to create a ref and then I have to like go into the, the ref and query for the, the H2s. Um, and then I'm setting up this, this is a callback for a, an intersection observer. Um, and then down here, I have to like set my headings as uh, like this so that they, they all kind of show up. And it, like it's all, all of it is fine but it doesn't feel, I don't know. It feels like I'm, I'm having to build a lot of mental models around like, what is react doing with effects? What is a ref? And then how to, how to, how does intersection observer work? Um, so let me show you how this changed when I put it into, into Astro, cause I was really excited about it. So I've got my layout and I've got my blog layout. So first of all, check this out. I have in my blog, I have, what the heck is that? I don't know what I did there. Um, so here's here's the CS or the MDX file, and this I'll make this full screen for a second. Um, so this is front matter. I specify my layout here, which I really like because it means I'm not having to um, like wrap the whole thing like I did in in Remix, and it lets me. Uh, it lets me specify that this is what will wrap this post. And then I'm able to just write as usual. So all good. I'm happy. I've got my, my custom stuff, like my asides, um, using, you know, tagged fence blocks for, for code. Uh, I've got an image component so that I can do things like set up, um, like it, what I, I don't think I'm doing it yet, but I want to have cloudinary parse to those images and I can add some extra styling. I can add captions and credits and, things that are, are possible to do in Markdown, but would be a lot of manual HTML. And in this way, I can just have uh, props that let me do it. And that's, you know, so so this is all, you know, this, this makes sense, right? This is, it's standard Markdown. If you've worked with Markdown or MDX before, this should look familiar. We're not doing anything, any groundbreaking work here. Um, the only real like specialty thing is this like layout key, which if you've worked in 11D um, is, is very familiar. And then in my uh, my blog layout, and note there's like no extra layout out here. This is the actual homepage of the site. And this is the the listing of all the blog posts, but we'll look at that in a second. So here's my my blog. So my blog pulls in the, the parent layout, and then I've got my custom post styles for my blog. And this is my, you know, my table of contents and stuff. And then I'm some of these I'm targeting directly, like the post container 
um, is outside of the scope of the of this. But otherwise, these are actually going to get scoped so that I don't have to worry about giving these ultra unique names. Um, I just get to write I just get to write code. And then down in here, we've got uh, then we've got our global stuff. So these are the things that, you know, like the typography and stuff that I wanted to be targeted. So I'll skip that and let me collapse this as well. And then we get into our layout. So, you know, styles, layout, feels like an HTML file. Um, a little bit of magic here with the, the Astro single file components, but this will feel familiar if you've used Svelte view. Um, the, the single file component is is not a, a new concept. It's just, uh, it's new if you've only ever worked with React maybe. So then um, you wrap the layout. So this is our default layout. And then I want more layout. So I'm going to put the, the article style. I've got a header up here. I want to put this table of contents in place. And this should look pretty similar to what was done in the, in the remix side where we've got our ordered list and then we've got our headings. And with our headings, we are going to loop through those, um, make sure that we only show the ones that have a depth of, of um, two. So we only want H2s and I don't want the H3s, H4s uh, cause I didn't want to deal with like nesting in the, the sidebar. It felt like it would be too messy. And then we, we drop those in. Okay, good. So notice we didn't have to do any refs or anything. We actually get the headings from Astro itself. It just parsed the MDX and found all of our headings for us. So we can just grab those out, which is wonderful. Like really, really nice. So then we get down here to the, uh, to the script. And remember, this is what we had the, um, this is what we had happening with the uh, the use effect before. So we just do a document.query selector all, so standard JavaScript for all of my H2s that are inside the post content um, section. Then we set up our observer callback, and that's going to you know find all of the the links in the table of contents, and then it's going to check if the uh, the heading that matches the uh, the current link is intersecting so on like a visible on screen then it sets the active class right and i don't think i have do i okay so so for everything i remove active and then i add it for the active class that's what's going on then we actually set it up with the inter intersection observer make sure that it's fully visible that's what the 1.0 is um and then we go through our heading elements uh make sure it's not the table of contents and then we just set up the observer and send back the the text content and the the href um and then we we do i do return this to like unobserve but i don't think you need it in uh in astro because you don't have re-renders right so so i'm sending it back in case i ever need it but for now i i don't think i do and then i just call that function and this is it that's a whole thing like there's no use effect there's no working around the render flow there's no telling astro that you know this should only run once or when it should rerun it's just when the page loads run this thing and because there's no re-renders because it's astro then i don't have to deal with that extra mental model of, of hooks and renders and, and all that which is really really nice um so now what's not working so the uh, the next piece that I need to do, let's let's look at the index too, because actually this is another cool feature of, of Astro that I really like. Um, they have given a a built in feature to load all of your markdown, and then they parse it for you. So instead of having to do like a, a file system call to load your markdown and then use another another ecosystem plugin like uh, Kent C. Dodds has a really good one on MDX that will kind of parse the file and give you the front matter and give you the content and all that kind of stuff. Um, Astro's just built that in. So I do astro.glob and then I do the file path to my MDX and it brings me back my my stuff. So I need my front matter. And for this particular list, all I'm using is a title description and URL. So I can just pull that right out and then um, we'll skip the styles. And down here, I can just do post map and I set up my article preview. Now I could pull this into another component. I, I haven't. I might, I don't know, we'll see. Um, but this is what sets up all of my stuff for now. And why are you unhappy? What do you need? Main class is missing in type. Required in type props, what? You shouldn't be requiring that. There we go. 
no hush you okay so um so now you're happy good all right so uh so this is this is this is what i like um content schema api is fuzzy tell me more all right Next year is going to be interesting. Okay. All right. All right. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm very excited to see what, what's coming with, uh, with Astro. I think the the team has been doing cool stuff. Um, and you know, I, 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 I like, I like Astro. I think they're doing, they're doing cool things. Um, <laughs> fuzzy spilling secrets. That's right. Okay. So, uh, so to get this set up, uh, I did not have to do much. I, um, I added the MDX and React integrations, which you can actually do from the command line. So if we go to astro.build and go to their docs, and then I look at Markdown and MDX, you just need, how do I set, like, where's the initial setup? Configuring. Nope, oh, that's not it. Um, where's the actual, yeah, Astro MDX integration. Okay, so you just run astro add MDX like this is dope and it uh it configured this for me so this file I actually didn't write any of this part of the file um the only part that I configured is I I cannot have syntax highlighting without night owl so I had to import that theme so I um I figured out that you can use any vs code theme in shiki which is the the syntax highlighter that's bundled with astro so I grabbed that that json Put it into a file up here and i can just import it like so and so this gives me my uh my syntax highlighting is now in night owl which is ah wonderful let's see there, here's one that's actually highlighting so yeah here's um night owl doing its thing so all right what are we doing next we're gonna do um so let's let's fix some of the things that don't work, right? So uh, so first and foremost, I need. Let's go back here and just look. Let's fix up the heading here. Let's make this heading work. Um, and so now we can get into a little bit of the component system. And so I've got my design system set up where we've got like colors and things. Um, so this is how I'm, I'm running the, the design system. But I have a, a challenge, which is that I actually have like the new design system and the old design system that have a lot of overlap uh, because I'm in the process of, of like redesigning my scenes. And so um, sneak, maybe a sneak peek on that. Uh, if I go to, what's Figma going to show me by default? Let's find out. I go learn with Jason and, um, looking in here, I'm working on new scenes, right? And so this is, this is my idea is to do, um, let's make you smaller. Okay. Thanks. You're being very helpful. Uh, show hide UI. Okay, so this is this is the the thinking of the new scenes is um, not super different from the old scenes, but going a little more minimalist. Not as much UI on there. Um, for guests, it'll be the same. Uh, this is going to be full 1080p, which has uh, been a big goal of mine. I just haven't had time to actually line it up. And then for the guest interviews, kind of maximizing the videos um, because right now it's got the the boop overlay on it, and that. Um, that has been like, I like it. It's fun, but I, I feel like you know, why not have more, more of the, the full size video. It seems like the right call. So this is the, the plan. Um, but when we get in here, this is using a slightly updated set of colors and things. So if I show the UI again, kind of working on like this general set here and like all the designers in the room are going to be absolutely horrified. But, uh, this is, this is sort of what I'm working on toward, toward a new system. Um, and then that's going to open the door for me to do more with like, you know, I want to have these, these fun 
starting soon scenes that'll actually count down. And then I want to have uh, placeholder cards and just a lot of fun stuff like this, right? So trying to trying to make this stuff all look nice and and connected and and all those all those kinds of things. Um, but uh, let's see. Whoa, dude, did I stream making the boop overlay? Uh, no, but I am going to have to port that so I can I can do that on stream. Let me take a note. Where's my note taking app? Where are you? I don't want to do that. Yeah, you don't get to be over on the main screen. I don't know what's up right now. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Stream idea. Rebuild. Boop overlay. Okay, that's now on the list. Um, all right, so so anyway, so this is my complexity that I'm dealing with is that I have um, I have multiple things in here and I just need them to be, uh, there we go here. So I need these to, to stay compatible in the interim and then I have to, this is where discipline comes in, I have to come back and fix it once I've got the new system. So, um, That'll be, I'm trying to make this as, as seamless as possible without getting myself into a lot of trouble around like having to port things over. So, um, let's do, let's do this top section here. How much time do we have left? We got like 40 minutes. So I'm going to open up VS code. Let's take this to half width and collapse the sidebar there. Take this over like this. Um, and so the thing that I need to do is I'm going to, uh, this header is unique to learn with json.dev. So I don't need that to be available. Oh, wait, it's going to be used on the video, on the videos as well as the blog. So it does need to be in the design system. All right. So let's make a, let's make a new component in the design system. And I'm going to call this, uh, page header dot tsx all right and we can go down to um the existing site and find that component because it's in here somewhere it's, i think i called it hero is this right oh no that's like the actual hero so it needs to be where did i do this Okay, let's look at one of the pages and we'll work backwards. So on the blog itself, there's nothing. Cause I'm like, oh, God damn it. Here. All right. So it's, this is just built from scratch. So let's grab this out and bring it over to here. We're going to export default. No, I don't want to do that. I'm going to export a function page header. And that's going to return. There we go. Okay. So this then gives us the, the raw pieces. And then if I go into my blog layout, that's not the thing I wanted. Then I can import this, import page header from LWJ design system. And this, what are you mad about? Declare but never used. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting there. Calm down. Sheesh. Uh, this is the wrong place, though. That's not where I want it to be. I want to be in the index inside of blogs and i'm gonna have to open up here to figure out where that is pages blog index no blog index there it is um so now this is where i want that to be so i can drop that here and then up here instead of this thing we will do a page header and we'll just see what happens. So let me switch back to here. Unable to render page header. Did I forget to import the component or is it possible there's a typo? 
yes, I did forget to make it available in the design system. Okay. Here's where I'm about to get judged because I don't have a good, I don't have a good idea on how to manage this properly yet. So just, just everybody shush. Okay. So there's our blog header. And, uh, wait, which thing works natively with Astro? Token CSS. <laughs> Vinny. Absolutely not. No, no, this is a no judgment free zone, or at least a, a no judging Jason zone. Okay. I'm going to style this. So to style it, I need to figure out what the, uh, what the pieces are. So let's get in here, page header, and I am using CSS modules because I enjoy them. Module.css, and then I can uh, collapse this on down. And so I need to have a, a block type, which is probably gonna end up being global, or maybe, I, I don't know, maybe I'm not gonna worry about that um, yet. And I'll look for when these things get uh, more common because they are common. I do I do use these in multiple places. I just don't know if it's worth abstracting yet. I kind of want to see how I how I do this. So I'm going to um, let's just call it hero, and I want a background color of uh, I think it's color black, and we can test that this is all working by import styles from page header dot module if I can spell geez dot CSS and then place this with styles dot hero okay so that's that's doing the thing um oh it didn't I think that block was already global that would make sense actually because I bet I pulled it in in my um my global settings. I did. Okay, perfect. So we can we can rely on some of the globals and I'll go uh, I'll untangle that mess later because I probably going to do a light redesign of the whole site as part of this uh part of this you know thing, this whatever it is I'm doing and don't want to don't want to spend too much time trying to perfect the old system when I'm when I'm probably going to throw some of this away. So, uh, you know, as we, as we do, I'll just leave, leave that for future, Jason. All right. So next thing I want to do is I want to get, uh, I want to get the, the text being the right color here. So let's go with a hero H2 and a hero P. We can do color is, uh, color What do I want it to be? Color, not white. That's not the right call. Let's do. Color gray light. No. Now yeah, let's just use white. Okay. Didn't like. Oh, it's because it's an H one, isn't it? What am I doing? There we go. All right. So we have our, our H1 and our hero are coming in a right-ish color. Uh, we'll fix it in post. Exactly. And then I can take my H1 and we can make the font size. Um, I want to try something fun. Have you all ever played with clamp? Let's see if I can remember how it works. So what I want is... Are you going to give me hints on this? No. Okay, so you get three values, and the way that I remember this working is that it's like 
you get the smallest possible value, your ideal value, which we'll call, I don't know, uh, to rem, and then your largest possible value, which is, oh wait, no, I don't, let's, how do we want to do this? I want to make this, um, let's make these like actual values. So we'll go with 72 pixels and 40 pixels. Okay, so now what should happen is as this gets kind of pushed around, maybe I need to make it way bigger to demonstrate this. Let's go with, um, is two rem smaller than 40? I bet it is. Uh, let's go with four rem. And this should like get bigger. Wait, 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 wait. How does this work? It's um, viewport width, isn't it? So let's go with the smallest it can possibly be is three viewport width. The widest it can possibly be is, uh, let's make it extreme. We'll go 10. That's going to be, that's going to be wild. Uh, check this out. There we go. See, it's getting bigger. It's getting bigger. And then it stops. It decides that that's the biggest it can be. And then it'll get down to that small and then it'll stop again. And so we can, uh, we can kind of control, right? Like what the, the ideals are. This is like, this is so, I, I, whatever I'm doing here is, is not right. Cause I think the, this, this thing is a little goofy. Cause I don't know what 10 BW is. I think that's actually like enormous. Uh, let's, let's do a test. Okay. So that's 10. What's four rem? That's four rem. And that's too small. So let's let's see. The smallest we want it to be is four. Five. Okay, so that's good. And then the largest we want it to be is eight. Okay. And then our ideal, now nah, that's too big still. Let's go with seven. All right, and I said five was my minimum. We're gonna say seven is there. And then in the happy medium, we want it to be, is it four? No, that's too big. Let's go with three. Yeah. Okay. So now if we turn this off, we do one of these, then it kind of sits there. It should get a little bit bigger. Yeah, it keeps getting bigger. And then as we get smaller, it will shrink down a little bit to uh, the smallest possible. Good. I'm happy with that. So then let's mess with the, the margin a little bit. Um, what does zero look like? Pretty happy with zero. Uh, what if I just make that everything zero? Pretty happy with that too. So let's uh, let's then set the paragraph to have, I want it to have a max width. Actually, we can do um, a width, it's a min of 90% um, or we'll go with 54 characters as the minimum. Too many characters. Let's go smaller. Let's go 35. That feels maybe a little too small. 40 feels good. And then do I want this to be centered? Hmm? Thumbs up, thumbs down. What do you think, chat? A fuzzy distress call. Oh no, fuzzy. I hope it's okay. Centered, yes, please. I'm keeping it. All right. So, boom. I'm going to call that good enough, right? That's That seems close enough for horseshoes and hand grenades, at least. So we'll, uh, we'll call that a success. And then um, I'm going to fix the weights of my... Um, I'm going to fix the weights of my headings because they feel like 
they should maybe be heavier. So here's my font faces, body HTML, um, font size gets set in the HTML. That's good. What if we do, where's my, where's my typography getting set now? Where is that coming from? H1 coming from the user agent style sheet. So this is not even, I am not defined it at all. Okay, let's make a mess. So we're going to go with H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, and H6. All are going to uh, get a color of... Do I want to start messing with, like, named colors? I feel like probably not, right? Maybe. Like color heading and, and color default text, that kind of stuff. Um, let's do it, but with a to-do, make sure this is not the worst idea ever. Okay, and then we're going to do color heading, and I'm going to set that to be color white, uh, and then we'll do color text default, and we can set that to color gray text. Okay, and then over in here, I can set the color to color heading. And that's going to blur, uh, yep, that broke everything. Okay. Oh, I know what I'm doing wrong. I have my colors in this are set up to be, um, they're set up to be in dark mode because they're designed for the scenes. But this blog is mostly in light mode, which means I need to modify in light mode what these are. And I have done a light mode setup here, so I can set this to be color black faded. Okay, so that's good. And then color gray text that I think will be fine for now. Let's see. Color text default. Did that work? Color gray text. Hmm. I don't want you to have that setting, so I'm going to find this in the main.astro. Like this one? No, that's not right. It's got to be in the layout. Main. Yeah, get out of here. You get set by typography, not by... Okay, so that should then be set correctly, but from... Yes. Okay, so it's pulling in the data theme light and there's the color coming from the actual typography settings. That's good, that's what I want. So I can close this one out and let's head to There's our typography. Okay, good. Um, okay, so then the next thing that I want is I want headings to have a line height of 1.1 cuz that you see, everybody see what just happened there. So you see how this feels kind of cozy for a headline cuz the text is huge. And now it feels kind of like spaced out and weird. That's uh, that's a little trick. This this is a good heuristic. Like uh, one point one of whatever the font size is is a good uh, for headings. And then like one point four, one point five is pretty good for for body text. That's down here. Because if it gets much bigger than this, it starts to look ridiculous. Um, and if it gets any tighter than that, it starts to get kind of cramped and hard to read. So I use one point four five. That's uh, that's where I've landed on being comfortable to read. Um, and then uh, need some spacing under this heading. You're right, you are right. We do need some spacing under this heading. How should we go about doing such a thing? Let's do it in. Let's do it in here. And I'm actually going to. Uh, we're going to set a margin top of 0.5 rem. Um, and I use rems for everything because that way, if I ever change the the default size here, like if I change this to 24 or something, then everything kind of scales up proportionally. Um, 
Whereas if I was using pixels, you'd have to kind of go through and, and mess with all that individually. So that's the, the reasoning for rems. Um, okay. So I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling pretty good about this. So then the next thing that I can do is I'm going to bring over another blog. Like, let's just bring in another post and see what needs to change. So how am I doing on time? We got like 20 minutes left. All right, so here's my app. MDX, don't need that right now. Let's get the blog. And where's my full-time learn with Jason? Let's take this one. So I'm going to copy this, head up to the blog, just drop this right on in there. And it didn't like something about that. Cannot find module wrapper post. Yep, because I should have changed all these before I saved. So we don't need this. We're not using MDX anymore. It's instead, what is it? Just the double dots. All right, so we're going to go here. Components. And then this one is image now. And the opt-in form is in somewhere else. Did I put it up in the design system? Components. No, but I should. All right, so this is the rabbit hole, right? We just keep keep on moving and everything is, oh wait, I have, I have the opt-in form. Great, great, great. Okay, so that's good. So then I can just import this from the component itself. And I will do that uh, from here, here. Oh, it's in the same place. I'm silly. Okay, so then I can get rid of this wrapper post, get rid of the closing wrapper post. We've got our opt-in form. Let's close this down so we can see what's going on. Um, opt-in form. Figure needs to become an image. And I'm changing this out to be source and alt because like, I think I was doing something before where I was writing a markdown plugin to, to parse this stuff, but I, I actually I don't think I care. Um, let's put this in here and then we can take this, make it self-closing. Okay. Um, then what we've got, I think that's it. So let's save it. Expected component image to be defined. Oh, it's called image. Okay. Close, but not, not there. What, what just went wrong? Oh, I need to set my layout. It's under up, up layouts. And ta-da. Look at that. So pretty straightforward. The the form's not um the form is not styled and that's okay. But I'm feeling okay about this. Like this is uh this is like not that's that's fairly painless to set up. So um so that's good. Do I want my font weights to be heavier. This is the hard, this is the one that gets hard for me is I can't, I can never make up my mind on what the right weight is for, um, for headings. Cause like part of me really likes this, uh, what is it? 800 that this font is weird. I don't know. Did I break the font? Typography ultra 900. It's there. Am I changing the font weight somewhere else? Post content H2. Font weight bold. Yeah, but I changed it. Font weight. Weight with a W. Sheesh. Um. <laughs> thank you, Khalil. <laughs> Uh, Bobby tables. You, I mean, you're watching the local dev server right now. Like I, I'm, I, I crashed it and it recovered. Um, like 
I'm sure there are things that I could do that would cause it to crash, but I have, I have not had to stop and restart it yet. Um, also, can we just take a moment and everybody just tell me that I'm funny for this, this joke? Validate me. Uh, okay. So I feel okay with this. Like I'm, I'm feeling I could let's style. Let's see. We've got 15 minutes. Let's see if we can style up the form. And then I feel like this is actually good enough for me to go and, uh, potate. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I feel like I can, if I can do the form, then this would be good enough for me to start porting everything in and I'll, I'll kind of catch the rest of it as I go. Um, so to do that, I need to go and find where the styles for it were to begin with. So let's go and look in here. We've got an opt-in form. The opt-in form is, uh, oh, right. This is, this is remix and remix just has you put all your styles out here. So somewhere I should have an opt-in. So here's my opt-in. Is this already, this might already be in here. Let me see if it's, uh, here's all the, all the stuff. I want that. And then I'm going to come back up here and just take a look into my global styles, which are in the layouts. No, nope, we're on this side. Okay, so we didn't include it in that one. Didn't include it in that one. I think I might have deleted this as I was as I was working, which is correct. That's what I wanted. Um, so then I can take this and I believe this will be a moment of truth here. I can't remember if these just work in uh, in Astro or not. So we've got the opt-in. That'll need to be global because it won't be in the, the post content. You will need to be global. I think that's everything. Yeah, let's try it. I'm gonna need color. Color, text default, and make all these have their prefixes. I think there's a gray medium. Did we do that one? We're going to find out in a hurry, I think. That should be a different color anyways, probably. Okay, so that's all the colors updated. And now I need to go and set my opt-in class. And I think that's the only, yeah, opt-in, good, okay. So let's go here and let's find out if I'm gonna get away with this. Opt-in form.module.css. And then we're going to come down here and styles dot opt in. Okay, pretty, pretty close right out of the gate, but we're missing some of the colors. So looking at the colors, I don't have a color pink dark, so I can try color pink text and see how that works. And then I didn't have a gray medium, so I just have a color gray. So let's try that. Nope. Yeah, no. Eh, I don't like that either. Um, need to fix that, but legibility is more important for now. And then down here, there was a color pink dark. So let's go with color pink text. That looks okay to me. I, don't know, I think that's shippable. Very excited that the uh, 
CSS modules worked on the first try. That's that's very pleasant. Um, thank you, Creature Next. I am very excited. Uh, man, Vinny Code is just roasting me today. Yeesh. There was a joke. It was. It's there. Look at it. Look at the joke. Um, <laughs> damn it. Okay. Uh, so in our last ten minutes, I'm gonna show you how I. Uh, what am I doing? Wait, what am I console logging? I don't want to do that. Let's go back to the blog. I think I'm console logging down here somewhere. Yeah. No more of those. Good. Yeah, okay. So that's not logging anymore. Um, and then... I want to take this live. So let's... Let's do this. Let's do, um, I'm going to add everything and we're going to say git commit, uh, work in progress, uh, porting blog to Astro. Okay. And then did I already set up a site for this? Let's find out. Oh, every time in the wrong Okay, so sites, got the API, the web hooks, the scenes. Did I do the blog? I have not done the blog yet. Okay, so let's, I need to start that one too so I don't lose it. Yeah. All right, so we need to set up a blog. So I'm going to add a new site. Um, I'm going to import an existing project and don't need... Okay, so back we go. We go to learn with Jason. Search my hundreds of repos. Okay, so we're going to deploy the feature mono repo branch. Um, and then my command is going to be nx run uh, blog build. And the output directory is going to be next run blog. That's not the right thing. Output target is static. Where did that go? So let's open this up. Let's look. Here's the blog. Here's dist. Okay. So I need to go to sites API or sites blog dist. Okay. And then do I have any serverless functions in here? I do not. And I'm going to try to keep them out, keep them in the API instead. So we will. Do I need to NPX NX? I'm going to do that just in case. Did you just change my stuff back? Oh. Did that actually just happen? Or was that like a visual bug? Weird visual bug. Okay. Um, I don't know if anybody from Team Netlify is here, but I'll take a note to let them know about that. Okay. Send them a note later. Um... Yeah, I, oh, that's a good call. Could, does somebody have a second to clip that? I don't, um, I need to learn how to clip on the fly. I, I have my, <laughs> this is my sad stream deck that I got. Can you see it? Yeah, my, my sad stream deck that I got and I was so happy about. And then I like broke my scenes at some point where the stream deck wasn't working anymore. So I unplugged it and uh, I've pulled it out to remind me that when I get this new box of stuff today, that I can actually do, um, you know, fun things like add markers and clips and things like that. Okay, so this site should, theoretically, fingers crossed, be 
built. Did it work? Let's see. There's my new tab here. Oh my goodness, everybody. Look, oh, wait, 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 wait. Why don't you have my updated stuff though? Did I not commit my... What the hell? Blog dist. Oh, I need to ignore the dist. I didn't push. Okay, so a couple things need to happen here. First, I need to go into my git ignore and make sure that should absolutely be ignored, but we're going to I'm just going to add some Astro stuff here. Um, we're going to ignore sites, blog, dist. Sites, blog, dist. Yeah, that should be gone. What? Yeah, I know. That was the whole idea. What's the what's the move when you want to do I just need to like get remove sites blog dist I know they have local modifications I want them gone Okay, so now my dist should be gone. I don't know, I feel silly that I committed that in the first place, but all right. So we'll remove the git files from tracking. Um, and then what do I have here? Git ignore, we're gonna git add, git commit um, or ignore. Astro build output. Now we can push. And nothing up my sleeve. There's our new build. And while that's happening, I'm actually going to go in here and change this up. I want this to be um, libj blog. And I want that. That should be fine. And then uh, did I need anything else in here? Current repo, that's all set. Okay, so I'm, I'm happy there. All right, did, what does NX do here? Yeah, so this is, this is the part where, in theory, if I run this build again, it should use the cached build instead. Um, I might have to configure a little bit more with NX Cloud to make that work, but, um, yeah, I'm uh, I'm pretty pretty pumped about that. So this is uh this is the Arc browser. So I think it's Arc dot browser. Is that right? Arc dot net. So this is the browser I'm using. It's invite only right now. Um, but I kind of dig it. It's uh it's good. Like I've I've enjoyed it very much. Um, it has a couple things that I'm I'm pretty pumped about. Like you have these different profiles and stuff where you can, uh, you can like add different sections. Um, you can add things like if I want to move this up, you can set it like move to, I've got my personal and my learn with Jason sets, and then you can, um, you know, do more stuff. I think, I think I'm in like a popover window and I have, uh, I have different over here. Actually, let me just pull this over and show you for a second. So this is um, this is my like the setup where it, it kind of shows everything. So you can you can sort of move around and see your different uh, your groups of tabs, and then they're they're also down here, so you can kind of see what's going on. But yeah, it's nice. I've I've been very very fond of uh, of this browser so far, and it seems to be like pretty well maintained and and um, you know they're doing doing cool stuff. Anyways, so. Site is deployed, and we can go out and look at it at lwj, lwj blog.netlify.app. Okay. And with that, we are out of time. So 
why don't we take this uh, take this chance to go back to the homepage and I'm going to give another shout out to um, White Coat Captioning and and um, and Laura who is with us today who took down all these all these words that's made possible through the support of Netlify, NX and New Relic. Make sure you go and check out the schedule. Um, you can subscribe on YouTube, subscribe on Twitch, subscribe on the newsletter. Hit this uh, this tips and insights and and get in there. And uh, you know, please please uh, come come hang out. And lots of good stuff coming up. We got Will coming on next Tuesday. We're gonna do Tansac Query V four. Uh, we're gonna look into um, Wilco, which is very cool stuff. Nux three and Nitro. Um, DocuSource 2.0. We're going to get into Faker JS and component driven dev. And I got a few more in the works that are, are coming. So please, please, please mark your mark your calendars, do the subs, all those things. Um, and you know, come hang out with us next time. Until then, we'll see, we'll see you. Thanks for hanging out, Joe.